Okay, it is six o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's June 16th, 2021 revised order extending remote participation by all members in any meeting of the public of a public body. This meeting of the Great Barrington Select Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. We've taken off a sentence and we've instructed other boards um, that if there are technological problems that preclude members of the public from hearing and seeing our meetings, uh, any of the meetings of town boards, the meeting should be rescheduled. So it's these are public meetings and whether the law allows it or not is a gray area, but there's no reason to have a meeting if we can't, uh, an open meeting if we can't allow the public to be part of it. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law 7C 30A Session 20F, after notifying the chair of the public body, any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting of a public body or may transmit the meeting through any medium. The beginning of the meeting, the chair shall inform other attendees of any such recordings. This meeting is being recorded by CTSB. It's being recorded by um, Berkshire Edge, members of the public and the town. Any member of the public wishing to speak at the meeting must receive permission of the chair. The listing of agenda items of those recently anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting, not all items listed may in fact be discussed and the other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. Um, we're gonna start with approval of minutes. I have to take a phone call from the hospital. Lee, can you go through the minutes, please? Uh, yes. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 27th, 2021? 2021. So moved. I'll second. Um, and we're gonna go on for a vote. Um, Steve, uh, Eric. Aye. Ed. Aye. Mark Fields. Aye. And I approve and Steve is still on the phone call. Um, minutes from July 27th approved. Do I hear a motion to approve the August 9th, 2021 minutes? So moved. Second. Eric. Aye. Ed. Aye. Garfield. Aye. And I approve. August 9th, 2021 minutes are approved. Um, select board announcements and statements. Um, Eric. Uh, I'm all set at this time. Thank you. Garfield? I'm off that, thank you. Okay. Ed? And I'm back, thank you. Okay, so we just approved uh, the July 27th and August 9th minutes, and we're just going around with like, what is announced. Okay. Uh, so Eric and Garfield and Ed all don't have um, anything to say. I have one small item. So sure. I hear there's feedback somewhere, I'm not sure. Yeah, if, if board members could just mute, let's see if that helps. Go ahead, Lee. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Okay. That does that, help. Um, I just wanted to give an update. Back in May, there was um, this is regarding the Monument Mountain Regional High School um, entrance way. Back in May, there was an accident, and I had um, brought this accident to the um, board's attention with the hopes that we could um, gather stakeholders to discuss um, safety measures that could be taken um, to remedy the. Um, the situation at the high school. So I was, I'm happy to report that on July 28th, we did um, gather stakeholders for a meeting uh, at town hall. Uh, members of the DOT attended, um, Peter Dillon, um, Senator Himes, um, Representative Smitty Pignatelli, myself um, and Steve Bannon and Mark and um, Sean from the DPW. Um, I am aware that Peter's gonna be updating the school committee about this, but there, um, there are significant uh, movements towards remedying the situation um, at the high school. And I just wanted to let everyone know that the meeting went very well. Um, 
we will be uh, looking into working closely with the DOT to, to set some things uh, in motion, including um, possibly reworking the northbound uh, turning lane into the high school and ordering and installing um, at the intersection uh, intersection conflict warning system. So there's, um, there's still um, conversations taking place, but I just wanted to let anyone know that uh, had concerns moving into the, um, the school uh, season coming up uh, next week that uh, we are taking um, steps to, um, to make that uh, entranceway more safe. So I just wanted to give an update on that. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. I have nothing. Um... Tell me, Andrew's report, Mark. Thanks, Steve. Uh, first on my list is Housatonic Waterworks. Uh, we'll be discussing this topic in more detail later this evening, so I won't. Um, I don't have too much to say tonight. But for anyone that missed our engineers' presentations, you can find those PowerPoints on our website, uh, and the video presentations from July twelfth and August 9th uh, um, on the website for CTSB TV at ctsbtv.org. Uh, GB Fire District Billing and Collections. This is also something that uh, came up at our last meeting. Uh, the question came up anyway about what our role as a town is in the fire district. So I'm going to attempt to summarize tonight. Um, the Great Barrington Fire District is a uh, quasi municipal entity, meaning that it has taxing authority uh, and serves just one purpose, which is providing water to its customers here in Great Barrington. Um, it is not a town department, and I, I just wanted to make that clear because it is very confusing for some folks that that, um, that believe it's a town department, just like the police department or the public works department. Uh, the fire district is actually overseen by a prudential committee of uh, five. They have their own superintendent and their own uh, employees. I believe they have three employees. And the town's role in, in uh, very simple terms is similar to that of an outside contractor meaning that for a fee, uh, 30, about $30,000 a year, we uh, charge the fire district and in turn, uh, we do some work for them. And that, that work is that we calculate their tax rate, we print and mail their bills for them, we collect those payments at our treasurer collector's office downstairs, we track tax title accounts, so unpaid bills, and we provide those turnovers and collections back to the fire district uh, with an annual report. So I hope that makes sense and clears up some confusion. And again, I know it's um, it can be really uh, complicated for uh, or difficult to understand why, but it's not a town department yet. We bill and collect for them. So I hope that that answers some of those questions. Uh, and if anyone has any other questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email or ask later on, and I can do my best. Um, board and committee vacancies. Uh, in your packet tonight was a list, or posted in the public packet, was a list, basically just a screenshot from our, uh, from our website. It's a current list of openings on all boards and committees in town, and if anyone is interested in becoming more involved in their community and would like to serve, please reach out to us. Just shoot us an email through our website or contact my office or anyone in my office directly. Um, so I'll just go through that list really quickly. Affordable Housing Trust Fund, we have three vacancies at this moment. We have two vacancies on the Agricultural Commission, one associate position and one regular member. Uh, one opening on the Community Impact Funding Committee two on the conservation commission 15 for the cultural council that's 15 out of 22. we have one opening on the historic district commission we have two seats available on the Houstonic improvement committee however i believe the Houstonic improvement committee will be making a recommendation to us shortly to fill those two positions one opening on the parks and rec commission one alternate for the planning board Two members uh, are needed for the Regional Transportation Advisory Committee, two for the S Strategic Sustainability and Livability Committee, one opening on the Tree Committee. We still have seven openings on the Trust Policy Committee, and I believe we're getting very close here to a, to a last call. Uh, we've still to date only had three people interested in serving on this committee reach out, um, and I don't believe any of them are Great Barrington residents at this point. 
we still have one uh, W.E.B. Du Bois Legacy Committee opening and two uh, ZBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, associate members. So again, if anyone is interested in serving in those capacities, just reach out. Uh, town buildings and our masking, our current masking policy, and this was covered in our uh, local, by the local media, but I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity tonight to catch anyone that, that may have missed it. We are um, requiring that uh, anyone visiting town hall and then staff members and anyone using our town vehicles or council on aging vehicles or any of the staff trucks, uh, anyone uh, entering buildings and vehicles are uh, required to wear a mask at this point. COVID cases are on the rise in Berkshire County and we'd like to just keep our residents and visitors as safe as possible. So we uh, thank everyone for their uh, understanding and, and uh, with that. So for E, F, and G on my updates tonight, I'm going to ask Sean Van Dusen, our Public Works Director, to provide some updates on the Housatonic Main Street sidewalk project and then some various upcoming paving projects that are about to get underway. And then Sue Carmel, our Finance Director, is also on the line. and She's going to walk you through a five-year revenue report. They've both been promoted to panelists. So uh, Sean, you're, you're good to go if you want to get us started. Right, so I guess we'll start with the, the Houstonic sidewalk project, which has been dragging on for a while. It started first thing this spring. Uh, we're still working through the punch list with the contractor. They made some repairs to the, uh, the slope of the sidewalk, as well as some repairs to the stairs, which I believe the building inspector signed off on um, about a week ago. I have a, another site visit scheduled this week with Foresight Engineering to walk through. And there's still some outstanding um, issues in terms of the, the layout of the, the road, which needs to be uh, moved. Um, there was also an additional dynamic sign that was added to the intersection of South Street, which didn't belong there. Um, and there are still unscheduled two other signs to be put in at Oak Street and uh, the crossing of the rail trail. Um, I just wanted to touch on those two to, to mention that that um, we have redundant signage and several of those, there's several redundant signage that's gonna come out at the end of the project. And some people have raised concern about there being too many um, of those dynamic crosswalk signs. So um, I think we should move forward and install them and take an, a look at them in a few months to see if there's still that sort of, um, that sort of issue that's, that's out there. Several people on Oak Street requested that sign be put there, that, that flasher, which is one of the reasons we, we did it, but understanding that there is um, some controversy about it. So um, I would like to put them in, and if long-term people want to remove them, the board can certainly weigh in and decide if they want to remove and put somewhere else in town. So I just wanted to touch on that. I don't know if the board has anything they want to add in terms of their opinion on those sidewalk, those crosswalk signs. I'd rather wait till they're in and, and look at them and let's hear from the people who's a topic. I mean, it, it sounds like there are people who want them and there are people who don't, and you can't please all of the people all of the time. So we'll punt, I guess. One of the reasons we did opt to have um, the extra um, signage is that there's a great deal more people using the rail trail, and there's also um, obviously the uh, the new housing complex going in across the street. So um, there's going to be a lot more traffic there than there has been historically. Um, I'll move on to the the other major project that's happening downtown. Um, the triplex parking lot or the Taconic parking lot is scheduled to get redone, along with uh, Bridge Street and Bentley Ave. Um, they're going to be repaved with uh, new uh, sidewalks being added. This is a part of a, a project we started two years ago and unfortunately ran out of funds. Reifenberg Construction was a little bitter at $1.6 million. Um, we're reading the paperwork situated right now. As soon as we get the contract executed, um, they'll be able to start probably within a week to 10 days, depending on how fast the paperwork gets done. Um, that work is going to have a major impact on downtown. There's no way around it. Um, the triplex parking lot, the Connick parking lot is getting two electric charging stations installed um, and the islands are being ripped out and removed. It's going to have a major impact on the restaurants that are operating there as well as the businesses. We'll be keeping uh, half of the parking lot open at all times. Uh, there'll be substantial coordination between me and the business owners as well as the contractor to, to limit the impact, but there's there's no way around it. It's, it's going to be a major inconvenience. Um, so uh, that, that's a, a, a product that's been out there for a while and uh, it's great that we're gonna get underway. I also wanna add that the, the paving of the parking lot is scheduled for October, late September, October to try to limit the impact. But 
again, there, there obviously will be, and we're sensitive to the, the restaurants that are there trying to make it through a sort of post pandemic or pandemic um, operation. Um, so it's, it's a project that needs to happen. It's a, it's, it's been out there a long time. It's just gonna, it's gonna be a, a bit of a, a bit of an inconvenience. Um, Sean? Yeah, Lee, go ahead. Yeah, I was just um, related to that. Um, not to put 47 Railroad on the spot, but um, seeing that they have that lot up there, is there something that maybe we could possibly ask um, the landowners if they would be so willing to let us use the lot during this construction time to ease the burden off the restaurants and pressure? I don't know if that would be um, correct for me to reach out. I don't know if that would be the board town manager that would, would take that. Um, any consideration we can certainly ask, I'm sure. I'd be happy to reach out and ask. Are the charging stations, uh, the, the car charging stations fast charge or just normal? I believe they're level twos and um, those take uh, quite a bit of time to charge a standard electric car. And um, I looked into maybe altering them to level threes. Uh, I think that'll be a little late at this point um, and it, it might, they require a lot of juice to do those level threes and the level threes don't fit all cars. I think it might be appropriate to throw in some level threes when we redo the town hall campus and do the parking lot out here. So there are some level threes. There are currently none in Western Massachusetts besides maybe one in Lee in the Mass Pike area. So I know that's an issue for people that have uh, charging electric car charging cars, but it, it might not be part of this project. Um, also part of this project will be the, the uh, pollinator garden installation on Main Street and the, um, the sort of tree pits that we've been talking about for three years. So that's happening and it'll happen as soon as, um, as, soon as we uh, get the contract executed, the landscapers are ready to go. So that'll be a nice addition to downtown and uh, kind of a unique, uh, unique one. Um, simultaneously, we're expecting to start this conic ab retaining wall in the next 10 days or so. Um, which will also help bind up traffic. Uh, so that, that project will probably go until Thanksgiving. Um, they're gonna have their construction stage up on top, uh, but there'll be some fencing and stuff on Taconic Avenue, which will sort of pinch traffic down a little bit. And there will be times when the machine will be in the road, so people should be aware of that. We're expecting the town hall steps to start in mid-September. Um, that will be an incredibly inconvenient <laughs> project for everybody. Uh, we'll be using the side entrance and the elevator, and that project will last probably until December as well. We also additionally open bids um, for the other paving project. Baltazar Construction was a little bitter, and that project includes improvements on Maplewood, Fairview Terrace, as long as the complete reconstruction of Roster Street um, with new drainage and pedestrian um, walkways. There was about eight different projects in this one bid, including uh, the extension of the rail trail along, uh, sorry, the, the rail trail um, cleanup in Housatonic as, long, as well as the river walk trail extension at the Little League Fields. Um, the bids came in a bit high, so we're gonna have to look through these projects and see if we have enough funding. I'll have to talk to Sue about it and, and see what we have to cut or what we can do. We might have enough, I, I don't know, it's unclear right now, but we'll probably be able to figure that out in the next week or so. Um, so that is the, the gist of the, the impacts downtown. Um, we we got to mention that the, round, the roundabout is taking place now to the construction on that. So this is gonna be a bit inconvenient this fall, um, but these projects do need to happen. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Sean. Sean, it's hi, Trevor, did you yeah. say uh, mentioned the planters that went in who's attack if you did you so you... we as part of the um shared streets grant which was I believe we got a year ago it was like sixty or seventy thousand dollars we were able to purchase approximately 30 planters um that were planted by ward's nursery and they're put in who's and in great barrington there's about 30 of them um, and they're mobile we'll be able to move them around and i think they're a nice addition to the town we, we got them for, for free and we have 30 additional Empty planters will be able to um, to put in other places and or replace the ones that we have if they break. Excellent. Thank you. Trying to make sure people here, especially who's the time, are where the planters are up. 
Thank you, Garfield. Anyone else? Okay, not seeing anyone else. Let's move ahead. Yes, that's me. Um, so I do have a PowerPoint to share with everyone. Um, it should have been in your packet. I'm gonna see how well I do it sharing the screen. Um, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna shift mine over. Okay, so um, tonight I'm going to give a brief overview of what we refer to as local option revenues. Um, let me, actually, I don't know how to forward to the, oh, there we go. Um, never done it this way with a shared screen. So I want to give a brief background before I get into the numbers um, to um, step back a bit where the local revenues that I'm going to be speaking about are room occupancy, meals tax, and cannabis. Um, and to give a little brief background of how those are referred to as local option taxes, uh, the Department of Revenue um, refers to these as other excise as we, um, when we set the tax rate, it's listed as a local receipt. It's classified on page three of the tax recapitul recapitulation sheet. The money flows from the local establishment, whether it be the restaurant, a hotel, um, retailer, directly to the state, who in turn distributes the funds back to the municipality on a quarterly cycle. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to stop me um, at any point. Uh, the money is then received by the municipality at, a, at the end of a given quarter. Um, so those would be the normal quarters. However, mm -hmm. as an example, September 30th would actually include the preceding three months. It would be May, uh, May, boy, I goofed that one up, <laughs> June, July, and August. My apologies. There's an extra month in there. Um, so it's not, it, it wouldn't be July, August, September. It's always a month in arrears when we receive that. How the revenues under the standards of the Department of Revenue can be utilized. Um, per the Department of Revenue guidelines, the room occupancy, meals excise, and cannabis revenue flow directly to free cash at the end of a fiscal year. These are considered general fund revenues, and typically, as you know, we use these revenues, we can use these revenues to help offset or minimize um, an increase to the annual tax rate. Um, this is done during the budget process. Um, these funds also can be voted out of free cash at town meeting, whether annual or special town meeting, and can be used for various purposes. We can fund town reserves. And as you recall, we did that during this past annual town meeting. Um, it, it's helpful to build up your reserves when you have these funds, the stabilization, capital stabilization. You can put funds into an OPEB trust. Uh, we've also used money and can use money to offset large capital projects, purchasing of vehicles and equipment to help um, the impact of borrowing. And also uh, community impact funding, which I will get into on a later slide. And uh, I just wanted to touch upon the historical data for Great Barrington when they adopted these um, local option taxes. Room occupancy and meals tax were adopted in 2010. Um, it probably was at annual town meeting. The state began, it, it, the effective date is July 1st, 2010 for both. Um, and for the room occupancy, that meant we can collect an additional 6% local option tax is added to a hotel or motel uh, bill, and that 6% comes directly back to the town through the state. The meals tax as well was adopted at the same time, and that is a 0.75% um, tax that is added to restaurants, meals, and, and again, the money comes back to the municipality quarterly. Cannabis, um, as you know, we recently adopted back in October of 2018. And that was the 3% local option tax that operates the same as the other two. And we also um, 
Well, it's not considered a local abstract, but I wanted to also speak about the 3% community impact fee that we get through the host agreements that we have with the different retailers. So um, I'm going to start with the oldest, the room occupancy tax. Um, this is actually a six-year analysis, um, so we have an extra year in there. Um, I mostly wanted to focus on the most recent two years. I, I will say for fiscal 2016 and fiscal through fiscal 2019, the average um, annual amount of money we received in room occupancy was approximately 485000 if you notice on fiscal 20, I have a little bit of an asterisk, I have an asterisk notating that that is on fiscal 10, 20 is July 1st, 2019 is when taxing on Airbnbs went into effect. You can actually see this in both the first quarter and the second quarter of the increase over the prior years. Um, actually the third quarter a little bit as well. Going into the fourth quarter, as everyone knows, this is where COVID hit and began, was in March of 2020. Um, so that continued into fiscal 2021. Um, and I'm gonna kind of jump down to the bottom of the screen. What I did was I showed the percentage increase of fiscal 20 to fiscal 19, and that would have been mostly the effect of the Airbnb with this negative, I'm not sure if you can see my pointer or not, um, this negative 7.4 was the first impact of COVID-19. I did the same analysis for fiscal 21 through fiscal 20, highlighting the second quarter and the third, the second and third quarter of where we took pretty big hits. Um, you can see it's 109,000 for the second quarter or almost a 50% decrease over the prior year and 32,000 in the third quarter or a 25% decrease. Um, again, the numbers are up here and you can really see they, they show quite a bit. However, the fourth quarter, we, we had 100% increase in, and rebounded quite well. Um, so for the end of fiscal 21, overall, it was almost a 10% decrease over the prior year or a $54,000 loss. May I ask a question on this? Absolutely. I'm guessing from the way you presented the numbers, you don't know whether it's a hotel, a traditional bed and breakfast, or a short-term occupancy? I do not. The, the Department of Revenue does not provide any of that information okay. to cities and towns. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to jump, unless anybody has any other questions, I'm going to jump to meals tax. So it's the same setup um, as what you just saw. It's a six-year analysis. Uh, this one's probably a, a little cleaner to read. Um, I did the same analysis on the bottom, showing fiscal 20 to fiscal 19. Surprisingly, the quarters don't line up with, with how they lined up with the room occupancy, but the hit right here, which was where the start of COVID was, was a 40% decrease over prior year. Fiscal 21 versus fiscal 20, it was actually the first quarter and the third quarter that we took about a 30% on both quarters of a $22,000 loss for both of those. Um, yes, there was a slight loss during the second quarter, but $4,000 wasn't really as significant as the other two. Again, the, the fourth quarter, March through May, rebounded nicely at 42% increase over prior year for an additional $17,000. Overall, we took a loss of 11% or $32,000 for the whole fiscal year. Next slide is the cannabis revenue. Now this is broken into um, two sections, two charts. Um, one is the local option tax. Both of these are 3%. Um, I'll start with the top one. Um, so this one is fairly straightforward. We, the first um, retailer opened in January of 2019 and um, the, pre, the following slide will have more details on the individual retailers. So you can see that's where 2019 is the first, where we had revenue, um, first 
coming into the town. So that, you know, those first two quarters were brand new to us, really, you know, can't compare. Uh, fiscal 20 was our first full fiscal year of revenues to which we brought in 1.4 million of that 3% local option tax. Um, again, you can see COVID hitting right here for 247,000 as opposed to the prior two quarters that were over $400,000. Jumping to fiscal 21, again, you know, the first quarter is a bit lower than other quarters, but rebounded nicely. Um, I think that was probably when the stores were allowed to reopen. Um, and you can see they were close to 500,000 um, with the most recent quarter being 490. Um, so fiscal 2021, 20, we have brought in $1.75 million. Uh, for a total of the two and a half years of close to 3.5 million. Jumping down to the bottom half of the chart, this is the community impact fee, which is the agreement between the retailers and the town of Great Barrington um, per their post agreements with us. Um, and that money comes directly to the town from the retail. Again, started in 2019. Um, these quarters run a little differently than the ones above, so I tried to label these as best as I could without being too confusing. Um, so again, the information is fairly straightforward. Um, you can see a slight decrease here where COVID was hitting. Um, clearly see a decrease in, in the first quarter of fiscal 21, but then things started to rebound as well, bringing fiscal 21 higher than fiscal 2020, which is, is significant in, in that it will help offset the losses of the room occupancy and the meals tax. Um, I do have to apologize that fiscal 2022 appears there. I can assure you it is actually not in this total of the 3.272. It, it actually shows it there, but it's not in the calculation. So I should have deleted that out. And then down at the bottom is the combination of both of those sources of revenue um, for the three years. Um, the total as of this June of 2021 of $6.7 million. Um, to kind of just jump back up here a little bit, I did want to say that the 3% uh, local option for fiscal 21 over fiscal 20 was an increase of almost $330,000 um, or a 23% increase. And down here, in the community impact fee, we saw an increase of roughly $63,000 over the prior fiscal year. So both of those will, will nicely offset the loss we felt in the other two. Are there any questions before I move on? Okay. Um, so getting a little more into the 3% community impact fee, this is a breakdown by the retail establishment. Um, I have the four retailers, which is Theory Wellness, Revell, Calix, and Farnsworth, and their opening dates, and then what we've collected from each of those. Um, I will tell you, your, my slide is revised. It's a little bit of an updated one from um, what you are looking at, and I had um, the 1,352.46 was also showing up in this number as well, so I've corrected it for this slide for, for the purpose of the presentation, just if you're wondering why that looks slightly different than what you're looking at. And then talking a little further about this 3% community impact fee. So as you're all aware, a community impact funding committee was formed in the spring of 2020. This committee oversees how the revenue is distributed to various groups, individuals, and organizations for the betterment of the community. And the committee reviews applications and makes recommendations to the town manager. At our annual town meeting of um, June 22nd, 2020, $185,000 was voted out of free cash to go for community impact funding. The funds were awarded to Railroad Street Youth Project, Construct, Volunteers in Medicine, Berkshire South Regional Community Center and Berkshire Hills Regional School District. 
looking ahead to this year, um, you would all recall that we voted 350,000 at this past town meeting on June 7th um, for the community impact funding. Applications, the um, application process is currently open right now through the end of this month, August 31st. And I believe that we're anticipating awarding funding in the late fall. Um, Mark could speak further on this if anybody has specific questions on that. But that ends my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Anyone have any questions? It was a really informative presentation. Thank you, first of all. Uh, You're welcome. That, that was great. Thank uh, you. Questions? Yeah, I just, oh, um, Sue, that was really, really um, very informative and very well done. Thank you very much. Um, for the community impact funding, um, that's a certain amount of time that we collect that, correct? That's not, um, isn't that a, a certain timeline that we, that, that? Do you mean, is there an end to that? Yeah, is there an end to that? You know, I did not, I, I gotta be honest, I haven't looked at one of the host agreements in a while. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I was on the. the you can add or Mark can correct me. I think the whole agreements were for five years. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. And then they would get renewed, you know, with with negotiation. Correct. Is that so? It's five years. Yeah, five no. years, and then they get would okay. negotiate again. Okay. That's what I remembered, but I wasn't sure if that was still okay. how we were doing them. Okay. Okay. I, I just wanted to be clear about that. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Mark, do you have anything else? No, I'm all set. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Mark. Licenses and permits, and we have quite a few. First one is the Great Barrington Land Conservancy. Uh, Janice Cavill, president, with permission to use town roads for the 2021 run for the Hill of Sunday, October 10th, 2021. Do I have a motion? Uh, is there a motion to approve the Great Barrington Land uh, Conservancy uh, for permission to use town roads for the 2021 Run for the Hills on Sunday, October 10th, 2021? Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, it's all votes tonight are roll call. So we'll start with Garfield. Aye. Eric. Aye. Ed. Aye. And Lee. Aye. And I, it's unanimous. If there's anyone on the line from any of these groups, raise your hand. Mark will recognize you if you want a little free publicity uh, or if we have any questions. So. Um, Steve, I just had a, a question. Should I um, add to that motion that um, it's with the condition that the applicant comply with the COVID-related local board of health? Yeah, every one of these would have that added to it. So, okay. Do you want me to go back and, and rephrase, rephrase that, or any board member have a problem with just adding that on? That's fine. So that'll be on. Uh, Tim Geller, go ahead. Um, thanks. If you have any questions, I'd be happy. To no, I, I think we're all set. Tim. I think you're you're in good shape, and we wish you good luck. Super. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, next one, Karen Beck with Great Barrington Fish and Game, 338 Long Pond Road, for 11 one day online licenses. Can, can board members just mute themselves because there's a lot of feedback? Uh, Steve, I'm sorry, just uh, if I can, I got to recuse myself for the next two. Okay, fish and game. perfect. So let me start over. Karen Beck with Great Barrington Fish and Game, 338 Long Pond Road, for 11 one day beer and wine licenses for their annual turkey shoots on September 12th, 19th, 26th, October 3rd, October 7th, October 10th, October 24th, October 31st, November 7th, November 14th, and November 21st from noon to 6 p.m. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the application by Karen Beckwith, as noted, or Steve, do you want me to say? No, that's fine. That's as noted, no. uh, with the condition that the applicant comply with the COVID-related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Do I have a second? Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, it's a roll call vote. Garfield? Garfield's aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And I. It's unanimous. Karen Beckwith? Great Barrington Fish and Game for one day beer and wine license for their Relay for Life event 
on September 25th from noon to 6 p.m. Do you have a motion? Motion to approve the application by Karen Beckwith um, with the um, notes made by the chairman with the condition that the applicant comply with any COVID related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Just a question, what are the notes made by the chairman? Um, that it's a one day beer and wine license for the Relay of Life Perfect. event on September 25th from nine, from noon to 6 p.m. So if, if that's okay, um, or I could re repeat everything that Steve says. Cool. No. Uh, any questions? I just, can I have the dates again? Because I thought you said November 1st. No, no this one's September 25th. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, roll call vote, Garfield. Aye. And Ed? Aye. And Lee? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. So for the next one, I'm not recusing myself, but I'm just stating that I'm a employee of Fairview Hospital. Uh, Amy Rudnick, Fairview Hospital, for a weekday entertainment license for their gala event on the lawn behind the Daniel Art Center at Simons Rock on Saturday, September 18th, 2021, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And Amy, I'll let you, I'll recognize you. Go right ahead, Amy. There's nothing particularly um, different about this, except our location has changed from the last couple of years. Any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call vote. Garfield? Aye. Um, um, I need to make a motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you made the motion. My, my mistake. <laughs> A uh, motion to approve Amy Rednick of Fairview Hospital with the notes made by the chair uh, with the condition, with the COVID related conditions that um, the other licenses have followed. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Um, Garfield? Aye. Eric? Aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Um, Next one is Amy Rudnick, Fairview Hospital, for one day all alcoholic license for their gala event on the lawn behind the Daniel Art Center at Simons Rock, 84 Alford Road, on Saturday, September 18th, 2021, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Again, just if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Amy. Motion to approve the application by Amy Rudnick of Fairview Hospital for the one day all alcohol license for the gala behind the Daniel Art Center on Saturday, September 18th from 6 to 10 p.m. with the COVID related uh, guidelines in place at the time of the event. Second. Any questions or discussion? I have a question, I guess. Yes. Is, it, is that well lighted and there's any guidelines there? I mean, it's going to be dark, obviously. I don't know. There, know we will. The event is in a tent behind the Daniel Art Center, and we will have lighting uh, in the tent, as well as there is lighting around the building that Simon's Rock is responsible for. Right, exits are clearly marked for the tent, et cetera. Yes, the tent will have exit signs only, they are required only if we use the sidewalls and we are the only time that we would put the sidewalls up if it were if the weather was very inclement because with the covid situation we prefer to have the tent completely open and when the tent is completely open exit signs are not required however they will be there in case we do end up having to put the sidewalls up Will people be wearing masks at that event? I mean, I didn't people, mean uh, people will be wearing masks um, when they are not actively eating or drinking. And we are, part of the event is in the theater inside the Daniel Art Center. And for that portion of the event, masks will be required. Thank you. You're welcome. Amy, Anyone? I yeah, yeah. Go ahead, um, Amy, just since you're here, you know, I, I'm looking at um, that the Fairview Gala and 
the Mahewi Gala have, have shifted from the town hall gazebo uh, location. Right. And I just want to um, ask you, because I, I do remember that uh, we, um, a, a tree or two had um, been removed thinking that we were accommodating the Fairview um, Gala and the Mahewi Gala right. um, to continue having your galas there. Um, and I'm just wondering why the shift and do you plan on returning? Okay, well, the uh, an unintended consequence of the um, enlarging of the playground behind Town Hall uh, regraded that area so that it's very sloped, which made it impossible to um, have tables and chairs safely on that slope. So both events, well, Fairview, frankly, had not, um, Fairview wanted to change the venue regardless of what happened to town hall. But since I represent the Mahewi as well, uh, we wanted the event behind town hall as we've always had it. But because of the grading situation, uh, we had to move it to Memorial Field. And this whole issue was discussed at length at the Parks and Rec board meeting back in, I believe it was June. Um, and Sean Van Dusen, um, was present and what is going to happen is at some point uh, he and some other maybe Wilkinson and may we tent and I would be more than happy to be involved uh, to have a meeting to discuss what the options are to possibly regrade that area in order to enable um events to safely be set up there in the future so does what, that what, answer your question yeah, yeah thank you it does amy let's get a vote on the fairview um all alcoholic license and then we'll move on to the mahewi and mahewi has her hand up so i'll let them speak after we finish i don't want to model this just because amy is representing both groups thanks yeah um so roll call vote uh, garfield that's an aye. Eric? Aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And aye. It's unanimous. So the next one is Amy Rudnick, Mahewi Performing Arts Center for Saturday Entertainment License for their annual gala to be held at Memorial Field on Sunday, October 10th, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I'm going to let Mark, did you recognize the Mahewi group? No, their hand went down. Okay. Um, no, uh, Steve, I'm representing them. Yeah, but well, they uh, had their hand up, the, so I didn't want to ignore them. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm speaking for them for the because it's a two day event. Yes. I'm in charge of the Sunday event. Diane Wardis will probably put her hand up for the next uh, license for the October 11th event, just to clear up any confusion on who's doing what. Okay, so right now we're doing the Sunday entertainment license. Correct. Okay, do, do I have a motion? Motion to approve the application by Amy Rudnick of the Mahewi Performing Arts Center for a Sunday entertainment license for their annual gala to be held at Memorial Field on Sunday, October 10th, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m with the condition that the applicant comply with any COVID related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Second. Any discussion? Roll call Garfield. That's an aye. Eric? Aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And aye, it's unanimous. Next is Amy Rudnick, Mahewi Performing Arts Center for a one day all alcoholic liquor license for their annual gala to be held at Memorial Field on Sunday, October 10th, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Do I have a motion? 
Motion to approve the application by Amy Rudnick of the Mahaley Performing Arts Center for a one day all alcoholic liquor license for their annual gala to be held at Memorial Field on Sunday, October 10th, 2021 from 5 to 8 p.m. with the condition that the applicant comply with any COVID related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Uh, and it's a second by Ed. I'm getting better at reading lips. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Garfield? Aye. Eric? Aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Now the next one, which is not Amy Rudnick, it's Janice Martinson, Mahewe Performing Arts Center for a one day weekday entertainment license for a free concert at Memorial Field on October 11th, 2021 from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, Mahewe, do you just want to explain the event to us? Sure, and it's actually Diane Wardis speaking okay. on behalf of the Mahewe. Janice was not able to make it. Hi, and Hi. sorry I raised my hand early. That's okay. Um, yes, it is a free event. Uh, the Corey Zink Band will be playing. They are a bluegrass band made up of four musicians. They have local roots, and it will be a community day where people will be invited to pull up a lawn chair and listen to music. That's terrific. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the application by Janice Martin of the Mahewe Performing Arts Center for a one day weekday entertainment license for a free concert at Memorial Field on Monday, October 11th, 2021 from 2 to 4 p.m. Second. Oh, sorry, with, with the condition that the applicant comply with any COVID related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Still second. Thank you. Do any discussion, any questions? Um, Janice, will this be under a tent as well, or is this open? Nice. This is actually Diane. Oh, Diane. Sorry, Diane. I shouldn't have That's that. okay. That's okay. Um, it will be, we will be using the tent from the night before that you just heard Amy speak about. We'll clear all the chairs so that people can, again, scatter around the lawn. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Roll call Garfield. Aye. Eric. Aye. Ed. Aye. Lee. Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Thank you, Diane. Okay, next is Patty Spector, Josh Billings run around, run around triathlon for permission to use town roads on September 19th, 2021. Is anyone here from the Josh Billings? It's actually run aground. It's not what it says on the agenda, but I knew better than that. Uh, I don't think there's anyone here, so let's, if we have any questions, we may have to delay this, and I'd like not to delay it. To put a little planning into this. So do I have a motion? Motion to approve the application by Patty Spector of the Josh Billings Run Aground Triathlon for permission to use tone round, tone, town roads on Sunday, September 19th, 2021, with the condition that the applicant comply with any COVID related local board of health or state guidelines and or regulations in place at the time of the event. Second. Any questions? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote, Garfield. That's an aye, Eric. Aye. Ed. Aye. Lee. Aye. And aye, it's unanimous. Okay, we go on to new business, but first, just we have six panelists and 28 attendees. Participation in a regional community development block grant program. Mark, do you want to just kick this off? Sure. So, uh, unfortunately, Chris is unable to join us tonight, uh, so I'll do my best with this, but I believe this is the fifth or sixth year of the CDBG housing rehab program. Uh, and us partnering with one of our neighboring communities. Uh, this year it's Egremont and, and some of the uh, prior years it was Sheffield. But the executive summary that Chris uh, wrote and included in the packet pretty much covers it all. But if anyone uh, missed it, a few highlights that I'd just like to point out. Uh, this allows for low and moderate income home homeowners to qualify for 0% deferred interest loans. Uh, it provides up to $40,000 for necessary repairs like heating and plumbing upgrades, weatherization, 
handicap accessibility improvements, lead paint removal, asbestos removal, uh, et cetera. It's forgivable, forgivable over time. Well, we place a lien on the property for 15 years and it requires a prorated payback if the homeowner decides to sell the, that home at any point during that 15 year period. And uh, I guess the best part of this is that it, there is zero cost um, to the town. First, do I have a motion? You're muted, Link. Thanks. Uh, am I just approving it? Make a motion to. Uh, um, just make the recommendation. Uh, okay. Motion. I'd like to recommend that uh, Great Barrington participates in the Regional Community Development Block Grant Program. Block Grant Program. Uh, just hold on, and you have to authorize the chair to uh, sign the application. With the authorization that the chair signs the application. Thank you. And, and I have a second. Any questions or discussion? Yes. I'm actually going to be a participant in that program, so I'm not sure if I need to recuse myself or not. I would say you do. And I'm recusing myself. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote. Um, Eric? Aye. Ed? Aye. Lee? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Okay, let me give you a little bit of, on the next one. It's the Housatonic Waterworks process and next steps. And um, Mark wrote an executive summary. And what we're gonna be doing tonight is really authorizing the staff to start the process of investigation uh, and it's in the executive summary i'm not going to go through that mark will go through it but the other thing the board will do is set a date for our me a meeting that we simply talk about this subject once all the data or as much information can be gathered so mark do you want to start and then we'll do the date sure Thanks, Steve. Uh, so as Steve mentioned, also included in your packet for tonight is an executive summary on Housatonic Waterworks next steps. Um, and now that we've heard from both of our engineers, ACOM and AECOM, sorry, and uh, DPC, we have a pretty good sense for what the capital needs and, uh, and improvements are for Housatonic Water System. And um, I guess the work to find a solution and a path forward begins begins now. So uh, my, recommend, my recommendation to this board is to uh, initiate working meetings on the staff level with our uh, local and state agencies and also uh, reach out to some of the other um, players here, who's Tonic Waterworks, Great Barrington Fire District, um, and then getting back to the state agencies, DPU, DEP, our legislators, and then also to get some uh, legal advice from town council. And then my suggestion would be, which is part two here in the recommendation, at that point, we hold a, a, a village meeting, a neighborhood meeting um, later this fall where we can present a plan or at least provide some options for moving forward. Does the board have any questions or anyone have any questions for that matter? Um, thank you, Mark, for putting together this executive summary. I, I think it's, you know, very, very urgent and that, you know, the, the town really um, provides the leadership on this issue and that we stick to the timeline and hopefully um, when we do have this meeting with the legislators that um, things get get moving along because I think um, residents of whose tonic have, have waited long enough. So I, I look forward to um, participating and, and leading the charge with, uh, with getting something done on this. So thank you. Yeah, we all do. We agree. Uh, Dan Bailey, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, just real quick, if you, one other um, group of people you may want to add to that, people that you're kind of including are um, is Stockbridge and West Stockbridge town officials, because um, there are certain portions of both Stockbridge and West Stockbridge that are um, represented by the Hoosier Town of Waterworks. Thank you, Dan. I'll be on the list. I should add that I also, uh, I've already reached out to Representative Pignatelli. He's been incredibly helpful. Uh, he's already reached out to DEP and offered up a meeting for mid-September. Uh, so I think this can happen rather quickly. I, I know this is urgent and we need to uh, meet sooner than later. 
Uh, DEP, DPU, and the governor's office have already received our engineering reports, uh, so they're all very aware of how urgent this is. So let's try to set a date and realize that the date we set isn't when we start talking about this. The staff and, and some of the select board will be talking about this all through the next three or four weeks, coming up with, as Mark said, a plan with information. So I would say the early October would be the best time for us to, to have a public meeting when we'll have enough information to talk logically and informed. And I guess I'm going to suggest October 12th. It's a Tuesday. Monday's Columbus Day. So how's that do for everyone? Mark, too. I haven't passed that date by you. I think that works. So we will, we will have a 6 o'clock meeting. At this point, it will be a Zoom meeting um, if things change. Uh, with COVID, and as we all hope they do, but it's unlikely in that short a period of time, we'll we'll do it in person. But it's more than likely going to be a Zoom meeting at six o'clock on October Tuesday, October twelfth. Not our normal day, but uh, I don't want to put it off to the end of October. So the sooner we get to it, the better. Any other questions? Okay, moving ahead, we have citizen speak time. Charlie Williamson, go right ahead. Name and address, please. Charles Williamson, 48 Blue Hill Road. I have two questions. Uh, the first question is, I was listening to Sean uh, Van Dusen saying that we're putting in charging stations for, I believe, electric cars. Is that true? That's true. Um, do the uh, consumer pay for the electricity or is the town being charged for the electricity? Town pays for the electricity, I believe. Mark, do you? I believe the public charging stations are, uh, are town sponsored, but I can get clarification on that. Um, this is another, I don't understand why I'm paying for somebody else's fuel. It's a cost to me, a taxpayer, paying for somebody else's fuel, I pay for my own fuel. We should be charging for the electricity and not giving it away. Okay, that's, that's a good point. Let's find out about it, Charlie. Sean is off the line, but let's find out. Thank you so much. Hey, second, I got the second question. Sure. Okay, uh, I see you're moving forward on uh, the town employee on the embezzlement. My, my question I've asked a couple of times, at the time when we found that this money was missing, are we running the percentage? I don't know what the town charges you, but as a taxpayer, if I don't pay my taxes on a certain date, then you start uh, charging me, I'm going to guess five or 6%. Are we occurring this five or 6% on that money that this person uh, allegedly took um, at this point, Charlie, we can't answer. When we can answer, we'll let you know. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, let's see, Dan. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Dan Bailey, 207 North Street in Who's Tonic. Um, again, two questions. And again, I apologize. I forget your meeting start at 6, not 630. So I just caught Sean's tail end of his um, update on the um, sidewalks. But uh, my question regarding that is in, and I, you said that he's not there anymore, but if you, if somebody could find this out for me and get back to me, it'd be great. Um, in October, the, there's supposed to be another bid for the um, ADA required um, bypass pads or whatever you want to call them. Um, that was, that needed to be included. Um, that was, that could not be included because there was already too many overages. But my question is, Who's actually paying for those and where are those funds coming from? Um, they are an ADA requirement. They weren't in the original designs because um, apparently the engineers didn't know about it, even though they're an ADA requirement. So I just want to know who's actually going to pay for that. It shouldn't be the town. Probably should be the engineers because they hold the professional license. 
Uh, we will find out pretty damn for the next week. My second question is um, the uh, yard signs or temporary signs that Farns Farnsworth buying cannabis has up. Seems to me that they're in a public right away. Does anybody know if that's true? Um, they certainly are not permanent signs, I guess. They seem to be more along the lines of a yard sign, like you would see for campaign. Um, and was there ever a sign permit issued that would allow them to um, put them up if that is not in a public way? And then if is if it is in a public way, why have why has it been up for like six months and nobody's said anything? Join us at the next meeting. We'll get an answer for you. Thank you. Sign, sign permits, just so everyone knows, are done by the building inspector. They no, haven't been done by the select board in a long time. Dan is aware of that, and he, that's why he's asking for us to find out, not asking us the answer. So we will find out because we don't look – normally we don't look at sign permits on a regular basis. And next would be – Sharon Gregory, go ahead, Sharon. Um, can you hear me all right? We can. Oh, good. Sharon Gregory, 32 Holland Beck Avenue. Um, the subject is uh, Fusatonic Water. Um, in this next uh, phase of staff uh, work, will it include um, a refinement of uh, a possible um, operating plan for the various scenarios, as well as a capital plan? Um, so that we can see what the financing needs might be under, let's say, just two scenarios. Um, it seems that it would be helpful because some things can, you know, basically be done in the next, you know, few years, and some things can be timed and phased so that um, some of the pipes can be done at a later time. So um, it would help to for us to have specificity so that when we ask for help from the state, which I hope we do, um, you know, that it can move along kind of with that homework done. Is that part of the thinking? Can you answer that, Steve? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, Sharon, thank you for your question. I, I think anything and everything is on the table at this point. Um, I don't know that we can, uh, have a timeline as aggressive as you described since we don't currently own operate or regulate the system so there's some work to be done between now and then but uh, my hope is to have uh, multiple options uh, available to present to the board and the public very soon yes um that you know in some of the studies um there were um, the possibility of doing, you know, attacking the filtration system this way versus that way and so forth. So um, it seems like some of those decisions would have to be made kind of, you know, on a what if basis in order to work through the uh, consequences, particularly the financing. So, you. Yeah. you know, as much as we can remove um, variables on a what if basis, I think, you know, the more we can progress in a timely way. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Anyone else? Not seeing anyone else. Um, select board time. Garfield. You're, you're muted, but I think you said nothing. Garfield. Yeah, I just have a question of whether or not we are, they continuing to work down at Bentley for cleaning up that awful mess out front with drawing a line, I guess. They, they have been, yes. Excuse yes. me? Yes, they have been working on it. They planted grass there. It's better than it was. Right. Are they continuing to do it, is my question. Is that going to be continued to be worked on? I, yeah, I, I don't think that they intend to 100% remediate that front lot until they have a tenant for it or a plan for use. Um, but I can certainly reach out to the CDC and get some clarification and circle back, Garfield. Thank you. My other thing is I have to say I have to agree with Charles Williamson regarding the payment for it. When they first started, when I was actually a member of the plan, an associate member, they had the guy from Tesla come in, and they were going to put in the uh, state's charging station, the big Y. Yes. They asked him if he had any idea how many 
uh, Roku's has an electric automobiles, and he had no answer for me. And I, I'm sorry. I'm a very I'm not sorry. I'm pretty much a local person. I, and I'm I am against us paying the electricity uh, if we're not getting anything out of it. We're not getting any return. Uh, I don't think we should be paying the electricity. Okay. Thank you, Narco. Eric. Uh, no, thank you. Ed, please. Yes, just just one thing. Um, I will be asking um, at, at some point sooner than later to um, bring up on one of our agendas a discussion about um, possible short-term rental regulations. I know that this was brought up uh, back in March of 2019, and w we can all agree that there is um, a serious affordable housing crisis going on with rising rents. And I've been hearing over and over and over again, um, why isn't this like more dependent to happen? And I really think it's come to um, another point that we need to have a discussion on the select board level on the uh, subcommittee of housing board and the select board. Is, is someone, someone's feedbacking? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, we're, we're at a critical time with the shortage of affordable housing and rising rents. And I've been hearing from many, many residents saying that they really want um, or feel the need that select board should, should take a, a role in this. So I'd like to bring up a discussion um, about short-term regulations, rental regulations, and what we can do as a select board to push this through um, in terms of having a discussion about it. And I know that it, it brought up um, a lot of um, strong feelings on both sides, but I think that we owe it to the residents to have this discussion because I think it's, it's gotten to a point that there's such a, um, a shortage of affordable housing and with influx of Airbnbs, I really feel that we need to discuss it um, before the next town meeting. So I will be asking to put that on the, um, hopefully the next agenda. It won't be on the next agenda. My hope was and what I've been waiting for, because we need to get this done by the next town meeting, was I ex was expecting a to hear that we were ready for a joint planning board, select board meeting. That's where that belongs, as the subcommittees from the select board and planning board met and talked about this, because that's where we left this, was that they, they were going to talk and then we were going to have another joint meeting. Well, I believe that the housing subcommittee uh, yeah. was going to meet again in September in terms of the joint planning board, select board meeting. I, I don't know if that's been set up. Um, but as a, what I was waiting for, for the subcommittee to meet and then immediately we'll schedule a joint select board planning board meeting so that we can both discuss this because it, it is urgent that we do this. And we need to get buy-in from both groups in order for this to have any chance of passing at the town meeting. Okay, so um, maybe if we put a marker, not the next meeting, but the following meeting, and I'll make sure that um, the subcommittee has a meeting. In the yeah, meeting. and what we'll do at the next meeting, we'll set a date for joint plan. I'll talk to Brandy, and we'll talk, see if we can come up with a date for a standalone meeting for the planning board and select board. Mm -hmm. Okay, but e even on select board um, uh, level, I think I think a discussion would be needed. But I, I hear you, and um, okay, good. I'll that's right. Thank you. That's fine. I have nothing else. Any media time? And seeing none by unanimous consent, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting. Thank you.